De La Fuente rose to Spain's top job after more than two decades of coaching in his country at regional and youth level. His first managerial job came at Club Portugal in the Spanish regional leagues. He then moved on to third-tier side Aurora in 2000, before spells with the Sevilla, 2001-05, and Athletic Bilbao, 2005-06, youth teams. He would later manage Athletic Bilbao's reserve team for several years before earning his first top-flight experience as coach of Alaves, the club where he ended his playing career. De La Fuente was dismissed by Alaves in October 2011 after just 11 games in charge. After two years away from coaching, De La Fuente was appointed manager of the Spain under-19 team in 2013 leading the side to the 2015 UEFA European Under-19 Championship title. He then rose through the ranks to the Spanish Under-21 and Under-23 sides, including leading Spain's Olympic team at the delayed Tokyo Games in 2021, before earning the top job in 2022. Prior to coaching, De La Fuente played 254 matches in La Liga for Athletic Bilbao and Sevilla. He ended his playing career with third-tier side Alaves, retiring at the age of 33. Luis de la Fuente Castillo, born June 21, 1961, is a Spanish football manager and former professional player who played as a left-back. He is the manager of the Spain national team. He amassed La Liga totals of 254 matches and six goals over 13 seasons, with Athletic Bilbao and Sevilla, winning two league titles with the former including a double with the Copa del Rey in 1984. De La Fuente began working in the Spanish youth teams in 2013, managing the under-19 team to victory in the 2015 European Championship and the under-21 side to the 2019 equivalent. He coached the Olympic team to the silver medal at the 2020 Games, and took over at the seniors in 2022 winning Euro 2024 and the 2023 Nations League. Spain were crowned European champions for the fourth time on July 14. It happened under the watchful eye of head coach Luis de la Fuente, who has seen many of the players grow up in his 11-plus years within the Royal Spanish Football Federation, RFEF. However, this rise to prominence began almost by chance. In 2013, De La Fuente had spent around 18 months without a team after his short stint at Deportivo Alaves in the Segunda B, Spanish football's third tier. At that point, the coach from La Rioja read that the federation was looking for a U19 coach. It was a light bulb moment for him. De La Fuente contacted Inaki Says, the man he considers his footballing father, and his candidacy for the position reached Guinness Melendez, the RFEF's director of youth football. A vacancy opened at U19 level when Julen Lopetegui was promoted to the U21s and the position became available, recalled Melendez. I contacted a few other people, such as Fernando Moriance, but he was at Real Madrid and wasn't available, so I spoke to Inakises right after that. I told him about the situation and he recommended Luis de la Fuente. I first spoke to Pablo Blanco who was the Sevilla youth football coordinator and who had worked with Luis during his time there, and he spoke well of him. The final step was a meeting between Melendez and De La Fuente. It proved to be the start of a lasting union. De La Fuente traveled to Madrid and Melendez hired him for three months, from March to June 2013. That Spain U19 team progressed through the elite round to the finals in Lithuania, De La Fuente's first with the Spain setup. In a squad that included the likes of Jose Luis Gaia, Hector Bellerin, Sandro Ramirez and Adama Traor, forward Ica Hernandez of Real Sociedad scored two goals for Spain, who lost in the semi-finals to France. Luis was the same as he is now. He put together a close-knit family, defended it to the death and, in the process, used his character as a coach and his notebook to put the finishing touches to the team, said Hernandez. I remember Luis as a very good man, who was very frank, told you things to your face and was willing to help with everything. He was very approachable, humble and hard-working. At first, you are struck by his personal qualities, 
but as a coach he was very good. He radiated patience and you could tell he knew a lot about coaching. The fact that he knew so many players at youth level will have been a plus in Germany with the senior team. After those semi-finals, Hernandez ended his time with the U19s and De La Fuente stayed on, although it was a difficult period. He went through a tough spell after failing to qualify for the U19 European Championships in 2016, 2017 and 2018, said Melendez. He was feeling down, but I told him that he would carry on as long as I was there. As a matter of fact, he won the Mediterranean Games in 2018 and I promoted him to the U21s before leaving in 2019. However, prior to those three missed tournaments, Spain had won the U19 European Championship in 2015. There, in a generation that produced Euro 2024 winners Mikel Marino, Bonau Simon and Rodri, the captain was Jesus Vallejo. By that time, Vallejo had already played for Real Zaragoza in the Spanish second division and signed for Real Madrid that summer. A pair of 2-0 victories over France and Russia helped Spain win the title. De La Fuente is a great leader in short tournaments, said Vallejo. He excels in this type of format. He has won with the U19s, the U21s, and now with the senior team. It's incredible. Vallejo's opinion holds plenty of weight. He was captain of the U19 champions, the U21 team that won the European Championship in 2019 and the Olympic team that won silver in 2021. De La Fuente was in charge of all of them. He has always instilled tremendous confidence in me, said Vallejo. He has a keen eye for talent in the youth ranks and one of the reasons for his success has been that he has known Rodri, Fabian, Marino and Unau Simon since they were 15 or 16 years old. He has developed them as players. These were the key factors that earned him the chance to succeed Luis Enrique in December 2022. According to Melendez, De La Fuente hails from an RFEF that was a training school for coaches during the years they spent together. There were only eight of us, and we did everything together, said Melendez. If I had the U16s, I would make the U19 coach be the assistant coach, if I had the U21s, the U19 coach would be the assistant coach, in the U19, the assistant coach was the U21 coach. We all shared the same philosophy and worked on the call-up process together. There is no question that De La Fuente's ability to effectively man-manage has allowed Spain to flourish on the international stage. He is a coach with a very positive quality, said Vallejo. You can speak to him openly and he always understands what is best for the team. He prefers you to be upfront with him if you have something on your mind. I saw how he improved at the Olympics. He has benefited greatly from being with professional players and those from big clubs. It was the missing link, and personally speaking, I think he will be with the national team for many years to come. He is able to train teams quickly, as time is limited. He's a whiz at that. De La Fuente's next challenge is the FIFA World Cup 26 trademark, which is already on the horizon for a Spain side in top form thanks to a man who has made a long climb to the top. Born in Haro, La Rioja, De La Fuente graduated from Athletic Bilbao's youth system, and made his senior debut with the reserves in 1978, in the Segunda Division B. On March 8, 1981, he made his first team, and La Liga, debut, coming on as a second-half substitute in a 0-0 away draw against Valencia. De La Fuente was promoted to the main squad in the summer of 1982. He scored his first professional goal on March 26, 1983, closing the 4-0 home win over Celta. In July 1987, De La Fuente signed for fellow top-flight club Sevilla, and continued to appear regularly the following campaigns in defense or as a left winger. In 1991, he returned to Athletic for a 20 million pesetas fee, featuring rarely under coach Jupp Hinks who arrived one year later. De La Fuente joined Alaves in 1993, with the side in the third tier. After one season, he retired at the age of 33. Coaching Career 
De La Fuente's first managerial job was at Portugal, in the regional leagues. In summer 2000, he was appointed at Segunda Division B club Aurora de Vitoria, but was sacked in March of the following year in spite of a seventh place in the table. After a spell back at Sevilla, Academy, De La Fuente returned to Athletic. Initially a manager of the youths and the reserves, he also acted as match delegate for two years before returning to his previous duties. On July 13, 2011, De La Fuente was named Alaves coach, being dismissed on October 17. On May 5, 2013, De La Fuente was appointed at the helm of the Spain under-19 team, who won the 2015 UEFA European Championship in Greece. He became manager of the under-21 side in July 2018, after Albert Celades resigned. His first competition was the 2019 European Championship in Italy, conquered after the 1-0 final defeat of Germany in Udina. On June 8, 2021, De La Fuente and his team filled in as the Spain senior side for a UEFA Euro 2020 friendly against Lithuania, after the aforementioned squad had gone into isolation when Sergio Busquets tested positive for COVID-19. They won 4-0 in Leganés. De La Fuente was also in charge of the Spanish Olympic team at the delayed 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo. His side won the silver medal, losing 2-1 to Brazil in the final. On December 8, 2022, De La Fuente was appointed head coach of the senior side, as Luis Enrique resigned following a round of 16 penalty shootout elimination at the 2022 FIFA World Cup by Morocco. He was officially presented four days later, with a contract running until UEFA Euro 2024 with the option to be extended. De La Fuente won 3-0 in a European qualifier at home to Norway in his first game on March 25, 2023, with two goals by 32-year-old debutant Joslu. He led the country to victory in the 2022-23 UEFA Nations League, a first ever, defeating Croatia 5-4 on penalties following a 0-0 draw in Rotterdam. Spain finished the Euro 2024 group stage in first place, scoring five goals and conceding none. De La Fuente's side went on to claim the trophy in Berlin with seven wins in as many matches, beating England 2-1 in the final. Due to his background coaching in youth setups, De La Fuente liked to work with younger players familiar to him and not high maintenance. Mikel Marino and Mikel Oyarzabal won the under-21 European Championship title during his tenure, and later represented the full team under the same manager. He explained his philosophy by stating that I come from a grassroots background. Our commitment, to the people we trust in the youth system, is not a pose, it is a conviction. Spain often dominated possession under De La Fuente, also starting to use a more traditional centre-forward and delivering more crosses to the box. De La Fuente married a woman from Andalusia, with whom he had three children. One son, Alberto, was also involved in the sport, and at one point worked with his father in the Royal Spanish Football Federation as an analyst. Having been raised Catholic, De La Fuente embraced the religion again in adulthood. Some of his honours. As player. Athletic Bilbao. La Liga, 1982-83, 1983-84. Copa del Rey, 1983-84. Supercopa de España, 1984, automatically awarded after winning the double. As manager. Spain U19. UEFA European Under-19 Championship. 2015. Spain U21. UEFA European Under-21 Championship, 2019. Spain U23. Summer Olympic Silver Medal, 2020. Spain. UEFA European Championship, 2024. UEFA Nations League, 2022-23. Thank you for watching this video.